I've, um, I've taken some time out of my busy schedule, being fabulous and doing my hair, to prepare a speech for you. Well, a few remarks, really. Feminism is cancer. Thank you very much. That universities have started to go along with it. They have started to respect students' uh, points of view when the students claim that they have been emotionally traumatized by different opinions. And the trigger warning in safe space culture has started to take root even in the best institutions in the country. Um, my view on this is that anybody who asks for a, a safe space or a trigger warning should be immediately expelled. <laughs> they have demonstrated... They have demonstrated that they are incapable of meeting the requirements of their course. Why are you here? Why are you here if not to discover new ways of looking at the world, to discover thinkers and ideas, his history, stuff you never imagined um, that was possible, to broaden your intellectual horizons? If you're not prepared to do that, go home, leave. Don't be here. For the same reasons. Um, the problem is that what most people don't realise, the gender pay gap is a sort of myth. No economist takes it seriously. The ONS figures come from broad church sort of averages across the workforce. And when you take into account the different choices women make, whether or not you include um, children in that, actually the, the pay gap narrows to zero. So I'm in favour of this only because it's going to really embarrass these uh, campaigners who constantly um, tell women that they're victims and that they're suffering under this sort of patriarchal society. Actually, women and men get paid pretty much the same um, to the point of a couple of percent. Um, so I am in favour of, of it, but only because it's going to explode one of the most persistent feminist myths of our time, the gender pay gap. I can agree on some basics, on the basics of classical liberalism, on the basis, uh, the basis on which our society is founded, that we should judge people on the contents of their character, that we should interrogate arguments, not skin colour. And I think we should also be able to agree, I think we should also try at least to agree that the way to achieve equality is not to lie about rape, as feminists do. The way to achieve equality is not to lie about how people are remunerated, as feminists do. Like any other set of ideas, uh, Islam is a set of ideas, and like any other set of ideas, it, uh, is, we are perfectly entitled to interro interrogate it and find it wanting. I personally find it wanting. I would also like to say, as a, as a, as a gay person, um, I am fucking terrified by mass Muslim immigration because the homophobia in the Islamic community, in the Ummah, is not restricted to terrorists. It is not restricted to ISIS. 51% of British Muslims believe that gay sex should be against the law. This is not Muslims in Syria. This is not Muslims in Raqqa. This is Muslims who live three streets away from me. Every other one of them believes that I, my lifestyle should be illegal. 39% of British Muslims believe that a woman should always obey her husband. Where the fuck are feminists on that? 25%... <laughs> Twenty-five percent of British Muslims believe that Sharia law should be instituted, which under certain circumstances treats a woman's... Milo, he's trying to narrow in on a question. Do well, we? I'm going to finish. Treats a woman's uh, testimony as worth half of a man's. The queers for Palestine, possibly the stupidest people to walk the face of the earth. Overlook the statistic that 97% of Palestinians believe that homosexuality is an unacceptable lifestyle choice. I'm not scared by terrorists, I'm scared by Islam. We hear this a lot from scientists, you hear this a lot in particular from female scientists, but the fact is that there, are, so there is some reason to suppose that, some, that, uh, that, there, that there is an advantage to being a man in certain subjects. There's reason to suppose that gender essentialism, biological determinism, whatever you want to call it, the fact that there are male brains and female brains may indeed have some basis in science. Now this is sort of thrown out of the window completely by, by feminists and female academics who just refuse to accept that there, there's any reason whatsoever why, why there might be a gender imbalance. Two things on that. One, actually the science is very much still out on that. And two, if you look at equality in society, if you look, for example, at Bangladesh versus Norway, what you notice is the number of women in science and technology subjects actually goes down as societies get more equal because women simply don't make the same choices that female academics and feminists would like them to. Women actually don't want to go into the sciences um, on the whole, and when they have every option available to them, they tend to choose not to. Right. These, um, these yeah, figures... Yeah, you must understand. These figures are... 
You're going to excuse me, <laughs> no, mansplaining, right. aren't you? No, uh, these figures come ways, from so. averages across society. They don't take into account the different life choices that women make. The reality is that women do prefer a more balanced life. When they go to work, even if they don't have babies, they take longer holidays. They tend to take more holidays. And um, the reason that, 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 that you know, they are paid more up to about 30, 35, 39, depending on whose figures you believe. The reason that flips no, Only the between end, 30 and 39. The reason, no, that's actually not true. Um, the reason that the figures flip after that age is because women make different life choices. Right. And if you take those life choices into account, no serious economist believes this stuff. It's repeated by politicians right up to President Obama, but no serious economist takes the wage well, gap seriously. A particular brand of feminism which uh, holds almost total sway in the media and in gender studies and women's studies departments. There are honorable exceptions. Um, but by and I don't expect you to comment on any of your colleagues, but a lot of your colleagues are off the wall mental. Um, and in me <laughs> We're in a situation now where students can go to university, they come out dumber than when they went in. They are infantilized by safe space and trigger warning culture. The idea that interrogating a new idea, coming into contact with uh, a school of thought or a person that doesn't conform to your prejudices is somehow problematic, that it gives rise to trauma. This evening, there is a safe space at Michigan University to protect the safety and emotional well-being of students from this dangerous faggot and a lesbian with the wrong opinions. That is insane. I'm sorry to be rude. Um, I'm, so, I'm sorry to be rude, but, you know, the, get a lot of platitudes and then a lot of contradictions from, from my right because you know you say well they should, we should have investigated diplomatic solutions and yet you admit that the rebels haven't come to the table. I wonder no, how, no, I how, you. Do, how do you, you, how do you um, a, I mean what is your strategy for negotiating no, with a brick wall because to it's, to work, it's quite difficult a, to negotiate when there's only no, one party. I, I disagree with you. If a process hasn't worked it doesn't mean that you don't keep going. I think what was really significant today. Do you agree or do you disagree that the rebels have refused to even contemplate and, and, and in any case so, so who would you approach by the way because this is not this is not an organization with a figurehead this is no, a this a, is a coalition this is a, it's a, exactly who exactly are you going to negotiate so that is why with? you because need right a now nobody even knows who no, that's to why you to. need no, i don't i don't agree that bigoted speech is always a bad thing i think it's important to hear from them i think it's i think it's important to hear from them you see what the left what the left wants to do is it wants to enable its extremists on its own side the sexists and misandrists of the feminism the uh, black supremacists of black lives matter they want to enable the extremists on their own side and silence the extremists on the other well i don't like the extremists on either side racists i don't like them and they don't like me i'm a miscegenatory uh, you know gay jew they don't like me at all um, but what i want to do is give a platform to all speech. I want more speech of all kinds. Why? Be is subjected to abuse that is saddening them and that is affecting them quite deeply. What advice would you give? Toughen up. Toughen up. The majority of what's called abuse, harassment and trolling is ridicule. Sometimes it's strong ridicule. It's criticism. Sometimes it's strong criticism. But that's what the internet's for. And you know, we're going to miss out on some really important, essential conversations if we don't allow people to communicate in the way that they want to. No longer fit for purpose. The Democrat Party is, is um, you know, is, is, a, is a mess. The Republican Party deserves to be destroyed. It is no longer fit for purpose. It disrespects and betrays its own base. It no longer practices, practices conservative principles in government. It deserves to be ripped in two. Um, if conservatism, if we believe in a conservative vision of the world, the Republican Party is not going to get us there. Well, it's extraordinary, isn't it, to hear about, you know, the, the fact that there's apparently a problem with women wor wor worrying about being too thin. That's, of course, not the problem. Wor the problem is that everyone's getting too fat. And actually, there's no evidence, really, that any of this stuff has much of an impact. A lot of the science is very fuzzy on this. It's social science stuff rather than any, any real sort of uh, reports or anything. I mean, what... What worries me about all of this kind of stuff is the implication that um, somehow we're going to make people's lives happier or better um, by encouraging them to believe that whatever body shape they are and whatever they look like, they're beautiful and they're going to be happy. That's evident. That's quite clearly not the case. I mean, if you look at women's, women's happiness has been going down uh, since the Second World War, actually. Every decade, women are getting more miserable as they get told that they can be who they want and look how they like. And, and you can say... I suppose that a woman's 
uh, self-esteem should have nothing to do with whether or not a man's sexual preference you know, sort of coincides with how she looks. But the fact is, women are getting more unhappy. And this sort of um, slightly irresponsible trend to sort of encourage people to eat whatever they want and do whatever they want is, what's, you know, is one of the things that's fueling an obesity crisis. And that's a really serious thing. That's a real thing. That's something that's got health implications. It's got cost implications for the NHS. The problem isn't too many anorexic women. The problem is quite in the opposite direction. We're perfectly happy to have uh, aspirational role models uh, in our entertainment. We should have them too in our retail. There's nothing wrong with encouraging people to live healthily. It comes down to an issue of personal responsibility. No cloud service is ever going to be completely secure. Apple does have a responsibility to make its software as secure as possible, but there will always be hackers who are much smarter and much cleverer um, and much more determined to exploit vulnerabilities. What this boils down to for celebrities just like everybody else is personal responsibility. And if you're going to take pictures of yourself like that, by far the most intelligent thing to do is do it with a Polaroid. Don't do it on a device that's connected to the internet that's sending your pictures to servers you don't control. It's a recipe for a it's a recipe for madness. And for somebody who is as rich and as famous as Jennifer Lawrence is, um, you know, it's, it's sort of unbelievable. Because they're higher in the victim pyramid than we are. Um, the silence of feminism and indeed the immediate victim blaming of young German girls after the sexual assaults in Cologne and, you know, loads of others as well. There was a transgender couple that were beaten up after some Syrians found out they weren't really women. Um, women all over Germany being, um, being uh, abused. 1,400 girls gang raped in Rotherham in the UK because the progressive authorities were scared of appearing racist and didn't police it properly. Um, and that's not, you know, feverish tabloid right wing media. That's a government report that said it. Um, you know, this stuff is horrifying. Importing cultures which genuinely represent patriarchy which embody all of the things that third-wave feminists say they hate. And importing these people en masse into, into our communities um, in Europe has been an unmitigated disaster. We not only that people under 16, 15 don't like them very much, but they're also getting, for the first time, BuzzFeed is starting to get um, uh, as many dislikes as likes on its videos. Because people are realizing there are no social consequences attached to saying, do you know what? This race baiting is not okay. This gender baiting is not okay. What I'm discovering as I talk to colleges, actually, is that um, the millennial generation, which many of us have written off as a generation that cares more about feelings than facts, has been very unfairly represented by a small vocal minority. Now, that minority has power on campuses has power in the media, has power in uh, the entertainment industry, has power in, uh, in academia, all sorts of different environments. But the, I have faith that the millennial generation um, is more sensible than that. And I think the proof in the pudding, which hasn't really been seen before, is my college talks. You get my college talks, right? I go, I go and I speak to people about free speech and all the rest of it. You see this, you, like, the internet is played out in real life in, in the audiences in my talks. You get Trump supporters, Black Lives Matter, feminists, classical liberals, all, the, you know, all these people. And then you've got like, Trump chants versus the Black Lives Matter. It's, a, it's an amazing thing. The level of... And then a wave afterwards. Right. <laughs> the, le the level of intellectual diversity in that generation is very um, much not what you would think if all you ever read was BuzzFeed. The statistic that you're saying is that the college campuses are among the safest places for women to be. And people who peddle the lies of like 1 in 3, 1 in 4 want to tell women they're the most dangerous places you can be. It's a lie. In what possible universe is that responsible or or um or uh, caring behavior that's not the behavior of somebody with integrity that's the behavior of somebody with a political agenda who cares nothing for the facts is there anybody in here who hates me anyone yes there we go thank you i'm afraid i'm afraid um This is an event for sevens and above, so anyone who just put their hand up, please leave. <laughs>